Hey everyone, Shane here with utiller.com. Today I have a 2020 Subaru Crosstrek. I'm gonna walk through how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. This is what our hitches are gonna look like on the vehicle. You can see the cross tube is completely hidden. All we can see is a receiver tube. It's gonna maintain a nice clean look on the back of the vehicle. Adding a Class 3 hitch like this is gonna give you a lot of different options. Maybe we have some bikes, we're tired of loading them inside, and we wanna put them on a bike rack but we don't want to get a bike rack that we have to put up on top of the roof to lift our bikes up and then pull them down each time we want to use them. Having a, a hitch is going to give us, uh, is going to make it a lot more easier for loading those bikes. Maybe you want to put a cargo carrier on it, uh, get a few things from inside to the outside, make a little bit more room for our passengers. Maybe you want to pull a small trailer. This hitch is going to allow us to do all of those things. We're going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, so it's going to work well with a variety of different hitch mount accessories. Reinforced collar gives us a little extra stability there. Hitch pin hole, which is here, is gonna be 5 8 inch in diameter. I'm gonna take a standard 5 8 hitch pin. This is what's gonna secure your items into the hitch. Hitch pin and clip does not come with a hitch, however they can be found here at eTrailer. We're gonna have rolled steel, safety chain loops. You see very large openings. Will accommodate larger size safety chain hooks. Now I'm going to give you a few measurements and weight capacities to help you when deciding on any of those hitch mount accessories like your bike racks, ball mounts, and cargo carriers. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper is going to be about three and a half inches. Keep that number in mind for any of your hitch mount accessories that may fold up against your vehicle, like your bike racks and cargo carriers. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube, it's going to be about 14 and a half inches. Keep that number in mind for any of your hitch mount accessories that may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 525 pound max tunneling, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So when you're loading the cargo carrier, bike rack, or even a trailer, the tongue weight, you want to make sure you're not exceeding that. Gross vehicle weight rating or towing capacity which is going to be 3,500 pounds that's how much the hitch can pull it's going to be the trailer plus the load included always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle make sure the vehicle can withstand an amount of weight you're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch now we've gone over some of the features let's walk through how to get it installed start our installation we're going to take a strap we're going to hang it anywhere we're going to hook it to we want to make sure we're going underneath our exhaust what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to lower it we're gonna have a couple of hangers we need to remove. You're gonna have one here on the passenger side rear. You're gonna have two on the driver's side rear. And we're gonna move up here. And we're gonna have one right in front of the axle. We're gonna remove those three, allow our exhaust to hang just a little bit. And we're gonna spray each one with some lubricant or soapy water. You can take a very large screwdriver uh, pry bar if you have some exhaust hanger tool removal tool or pliers you can use those we're just going to work that off of there we're going to do that same thing with the the remaining three next thing we need to do is on each frame rail we're going to have three plugs we need to remove the rearmost one and the forwardmost one you can use a trim panel tool flathead screwdriver, we'll pop each one of those out on each side. And what we need to do is this very forward hole, we need to enlarge the opening so that our hardware will fit up inside. You can do it a couple different ways. You can use a grinding bit, uh, cutting wheel. I find that a grinding bit actually opens it up a little bit better. Um, so how, whatever means you have, you just need to make sure you, you're able to get the hardware inside. Next thing I recommend is taking some clear coat uh, paint or color paint, it doesn't really matter, and cover up that bare metal that you just trimmed out. It's going to help resist any rust or corrosion later on. While we're letting our clear coat dry, we're going to get our hitch ready to put in place. You're going to have two blocks that look like this, they have a round hole in them. The very back hole, or most forward hole, is where we're going to be installing it. We're going to be installing it just like this. The easiest way to do this rather than put the hitch up and try to slide this in is to take a piece of tape we 
we're just gonna tape it right over that hole, just like that. We're gonna put one of these on each side of the hedge. Once our paint's dry, we need to install our hardware into the frame rail. You're gonna get pull wires that are gonna look like this. We're gonna start with this rear hole. We're gonna take the spring in. We're gonna go through the hole and we're gonna come out of this one. Just like that. It may be easier if you put a slight bend in the end of it towards the uh, spring end so it falls out of that hole. You're gonna take a spacer block. We're gonna slide it on just like that. Go ahead and slide it up into the hole. Be careful you don't let the wire, the other end of the wire go uh, up in there. We're gonna thread on our carriage bolt. And it may be easier to take your carriage bolt, put the head in first, and we'll pull it down just like that. For this hole, we're gonna take our spring, we're gonna put on our spacer block, thread on the carriage bolt, Feed the bolt up in first, followed by the spacer block, and then pull it back down. We're going to leave our wires attached for now. We're going to repeat that same thing on the opposite side. Next, with an extra set of hands, we're going to feed our pull wires into the appropriate holes on the hitch. Get our hitch up into place. We'll remove one of the pull wires on each side. And we're going to install the flange nut. We'll get one of these on each side, hold the hitch up in place while we install the remaining hardware. Once we have all of our hardware installed, we're going to come back with a three quarter inch socket. We're going to tighten it all down. Next, we'll come back with a torque wrench. We're going to torque everything to the specifications listed in the instructions. Once you've torqued all your hardware, the specifications and instructions, reinstall your exhaust in reverse order from the way you took it off. Don't forget to remove your strap and you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at in installation on the eTrailer.com Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2020 Subaru Crosstrek.